Okay, so this video is about those sheep gimbals which you can put on any helicopter or on uh, a DJI Phantom. Um, I'm going to show you quick how this whole thing works here on a Macintosh computer. <coughs> so, first of all here, my first link here, this one, shows those boards you can buy online and also those gimbals, a complete set or board and the whole frame thing separate from each other. So you buy just the motor and the frame and then you buy the board separate. That what this is about and this is about the BGC LX Moss board, that's how they call it. Um, you can look this up on Basecam Electronics, that is here. They have a download tab up here and here is 8-bit board, this is a cheap 8-bit board. And in there I like the version 2.2b2, that seems to work with cheap boards. I'm going to download it now by right, right click. And then there's a manual for how to use this, I can click on that too. I will see the manual here and I can read about the board and how to do those settings. So it talks about from what I'm going to talk about in a second, okay? Now I look in my download folder. I have the software I need downloaded here from this link and the manual for it. Let me put this here. Oh. So this is the manual I downloaded from this link. Okay, so it is possible that you eventually need a driver. There is uh, a chip on there what does the communication, the stereo, the, the USB thing. Uh, you need to know what chip is put on there. There is two options. So the software I just downloaded has a README file in it. Here, README text. Let's open this, and it has two links where you can find drivers, right? Okay. Link one, this one. It has an FTDI chip driver for Mac OS X. Last one here, 2218. I'm going to download this. Here's my download progress. Let's look inside my download folder. Here's the FTDI. So I got this from this link. And then we have this one. This was the second link. Uh, Silicon Labs. This is the one we need in my case. Download the <coughs> driver for this. Here. So I downloaded this from this link, okay. We don't need anything anymore in our browser. Okay, <coughs> in order to install those drivers, it's very easy, double click on this, it will mount it here, there is one. Do the same here. Mounts it here. This guy was so nice to open it immediately. FTDI driver, right? You install this in the following way. Your operating system, uh, OS 10.3 or 10.4, 10.5, 10.6 and so on. So what do you have? You look in your little Apple icon and you look what you have. Version 10.10.1. .10 so it's not 10.3, it's 10.10. 10.4, 5, and so on. This one. Double click. This thing guides you through it. Continue, continue, continue and OK, right? So this will install there. I don't do it because I did it already. Ha. Silicon Lab, same thing. Double click on it. It will open the window. Double click on the only thing in here. Continue, continue, continue until this is thing is done. I did this already. That's why I don't have to do it. Okay, so now this is my manual for this whole thing. We don't need anything anymore except this now. This is on the, our software. On the Mac, we don't do the executable file, we do the Java file here. In the README, we can read that the serial connection sometimes needs a folder on the computer where it can write data for it temporarily. I need to make this folder, but I need the terminal program for it. So the terminal program is under Applications, Utilities, 
terminal. There is my terminal. Let's put this here, right? Okay. Now, I'm supposed to enter this here, the green area, right? Command C to copy it. Command V to insert it. Super user means when I click enter, it wants my password. So the password is the password where you log into your computer. So it says my file exists already. That's fine. So then I did this before already. So we have it. Then we need to change the mode for this folder here to 777. This is the rights. So everybody is allowed to read, write, and whatever. Paste this in here. Enter. There's no error message, so that means it worked. Good. <coughs> now we can start this in theory. But what we do first is we power up our uh, drone here to give power to the gimbal. We want this thing powered. Here. The gimbal is going in some position. I'm going to turn my remote control on. And now I plug in the USB. There is two different ones. This one has the same as the Google phone. Uh, sometimes they are like what you put in your camera a little bigger than this. So those connectors have to match before you plug it into your computer here. Very careful inserting me here. And then we can start this program here. Not the executable, the Java file. Double click on this. It will ask us if we allow this. Yes, we do allow this. Sometimes you have to go, if your Mac is locked, to System Preferences. You have to go to Security Settings. And you have to enable here, do allow apps downloaded from anywhere. This year. Uh, to allow this thing to run, okay? Now, if you are right, if your driver is installed correctly, you will find, besides for Bluetooth situations, the C Lab, in my case, Silicon Labs, the TTY one. That's the one you want to click. And then when you press connect, it takes a second and you would connect. If you go on the real time data tab, you will see there's data coming from the board. And you can see the gyro move and everything. If I touch here and move, then you see what happens. Okay, all hell breaks loose. Okay, now, in my case it runs pretty well already. On my remote, I can move left and right this lever. Put this here. Can you see this here? You see my camera in the background moving? And what you also see is here my remote control pitch. Those numbers there. Those numbers are the numbers that change. The blue bar you see, the blue bar is the position of my little lever. Isn't that fantastic? Okay, we go to the basics tab. We Look at the number of poles. This has to match your motor. Here's a little video. So, the gimbal motor has those coils in there. I think we can see this here clearly. There are those little copper coils. There's a bunch of them in there. So, for the settings you have to count them. How many are there all the way around? In my case it is 12. Okay, so we found out I have 12. No, I don't need my video anymore. It means the poles here I have to change to 12. 12. And then I write this to the gyro. Okay, to the board. I mean, I'm sorry, not to the gyro. Uh, sensor calibration. So there is a sensor underneath here. I do not use the original setup. The original setup, this motor would be on the right side. I have it on the left because I want to be able to access the USB port while it's mounted on here. So I have my board underneath. The board orientation, I, I enter here, minus Z and X. If you read the user manual, 
this one here, the BGC manual, you can read about it, about this orientation on this little board. It has the markings and there is letters on there. So that's how you set this. So in your case, if the motor is on the right, you probably have plus Z and X. Skip gyro, gyro calibration at startup means that it doesn't calibrate again every time you power it up. If you want to calibrate, you would have to click the button and then hold it super still. Okay, that was the calibration. Calibrate the gyro, same thing. You click on it, then you hold super still for a few seconds. Do not move at all. And there we go. So that's calibrated. Don't play with those numbers. We hope that the ever, whoever owned this before did the settings right for you. Don't play too much with it. The power is how hard this thing will hold this thing in place when you push on it. I do 70% power. The more power you have here, the more power your gimbal will need. The less you have, the more easier it is to get out of whack. So I, in my case, use 75%. Good. Next time, next thing, RC settings, remote control settings. So when I move here my lever, uh, the pitch is the most important. Remote control pitch, that's the function for the pitch. It's the input. What's coming from the DJI, go into this board, telling it at what position it has to be. Uh, <coughs> here you give the maximum angle. You can use minus and pl uh, negative and positive values here. Uh, if I, the minimum angle, set this to minus 40, for example, and right, then you see that the camera turns down already. So 40 in my case is not correct. I have to do it minus 10 in my case. Minus 10 and right. So then it goes in a certain position there, right? Gonna move here back and forth. That's my down position. My down position is minus 75. I can change that to whatever. The up position here. In my case, it's minus 10. Down position, minus 75, okay? So it goes in there. Now if I change this, I have minus 75. Let's change to minus 90, right? It goes so far that the cable gets stuck here. So that doesn't help me. Let's do minus 60, right? Minus 75, right? Uh, it's completely out of whack now. So read, see what I have. I go back to basics, calibrate. Calibrate gyro. Uh, let's see here. There's one. the other. Minus 55. So, okay, so I have here the minus 10, and here the minus 55, and you see it doesn't turn enough, so in my case minus 75 would be the right value. And it needs a minute to go to this spot. So. You have to have patience. A battery cycle probably and then we go good. Okay. Also possible that my battery lungs slowly is getting lower here. Yeah, yeah. 
Let's change the roll angle to zero. You can see how it is moving around. Because the roll angle we do not enter through the RC control. As you can see here now, we change the speed, how fast we switch between those two. If I do 5 only, we change slow. And here is the speed controlled by the remote control. So that looks pretty good. If we are done with everything, we just disconnect and the system will memorize all our settings. So now we are not connected. Now we can disconnect the board and unplug the power. Oops. And turn off our remote control. I hope this video helped a little bit for those of you guys who have problems setting this up right.